This is AIM Agenda. With me now, Tim Wilson and Peter Khalil. Tim, the Batman by-election, what are your thoughts on the result? What issues were at play? Does it show that Labor, its policy on the dividends might not be as, as uh, adverse as we thought in terms of the politics? Yeah. Well, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Karen. Um, Kieran, the politics of the next, gener next decade are not going to be fought on Labor versus capital, social, uh, socialism versus liberalism. They're going to be fought on the politics of generations. Uh, and uh, it's quite clear to me that Labor's figured that out and now they're starting to engage in cheap populism to undermine the interests of people who have saved and invested for their retirement. But uh, it has a political effect and uh, perhaps it isn't as strong as some people thought it was. Yeah, well, Peter, is that your sense of things that it may may not have been as uh, potent an issue? Does it? Do you feel emboldened by the result in Batman? Well, I think um, first of all, congratulations to Jed Kearney. She she ran a fantastic campaign. I've worked very closely with Jed because I'm the electorate next door, and I think. One of the key things uh, around this victory is that she got out there and actually spoke to the people of Batman about issues that, that really impacted them. Education, healthcare, infrastructure, public transport. These are things that mattered to people and she was able to reach those people and talk to those people about those issues and be a candidate who could actually deliver uh, in government, mm -hmm. in a party of government if we were to win the next uh, election. Whereas the Greens can, it was kind of hidden away and um, was also bunkered down quite a bit of the campaign dealing with allegations from her own party about her, her uh, conduct. So Jed ran a fantastic campaign. I don't think the, uh, the tax policy that was announced a couple of days before had the impact that the media thought it mm. would uh, because people were focused okay. on local issues and ultimately all politics is local, Kieran. And Tim Wilson, in relation to the Catholic schools, I know Mr Shorten, according to Simon Benson's report in The Australian today, spoke to the education chief executive, the Catholic Education Office chief, to thank him for his support during this campaign. Do you think that's something that, that uh, the government needs to be cognizant of? Is this potent? Well, look, I've no doubt that when you have, um, I mean, it's, it's a difficult question because, you know, we're giving the biggest injection of public funding to Catholic schools uh, pretty much in a generation. Uh, there is more money going to Catholic schools today than there was in previous years and will continue to rise. And that was critical to the Gonski 2.0 model. Uh, and so uh, there are some people out there, including the education system, are saying they don't like how it's being allocated or they want more. Um, you know, Labor will always promise more than they can ever deliver. They'll always promise more spending they can match up with the tax they're prepared to take from people. That's why we go into deficits under Labor. That's why we go into debt under Labor. Um, but uh, you, when you have third party advocates out there making a case, of course, some people are going to listen to it. The reality is that the government is going to be delivering more funding to the Catholic education system because we believe in a holistic, yeah. diverse well, just not education true. You're not system. You're not giving more funding to the Catholic school sector. Well, That's, we are, this we is, are the, actually, this is Peter, the point. And this is the reason that the Catholic school Peter, sector we actually are. is actually <laughs> uh, advocating for Labor's policy because we're committed to the Catholic school sector. This did play a role. Kieran, I talk to Catholic school parents all the time and the low fee paying Catholic schools, because of our needs basis policy, they know that if, if they lose that funding that they were otherwise going to get and which we're committed to, uh, some of those parents won't be able to keep putting their kids into those schools. They then have to put them in the public school sector Peter, and it puts a, a strain on that sector. The Catholic school Peter, sector and the public school sector has worked together based for 50, education, 60 years. Okay. Funding you guys are the, cutting the Catholic school sector and they know it. And but they're no, advocating no, no. on that on that basis. Hang on, hang on. We need, that that right. is just a no, blatant no, no, Tim, lie. The we've reality got to, is, we've you know, Kieran, we passed and, and funding. You, the thing that you've got to do is convince the Catholic system, not Peter. And Catholic schools and the Australian Labor Party voted okay. against it in the Parliament. We increased funding; they voted against it. That's well, the reality. Well, Tim, I, th I would suggest you get onto the the phone to uh, Mr. Elder, Jim Elder, and convince him <laughs> because he's the one you've got to convince, not Peter Khalil. Thank you both for your time. We'll talk to you soon. A quick break. Back in just a moment.